right, so let's uh, move on to what Stream Inside is about. Um, excuse me, just a minute. Stream Insights, obviously, is from Microsoft, uh, is a platform for building complex event processing applications. Uh, the current version of Stream Insight is 2.1, uh, released last month. Uh, but unlike any major, or oh, sorry, um, any minor version updates, this has a set of significant changes over 2.0, uh, like the development model. Uh, we shall see that in the upcoming slides. It complements SQL Server. As it's uh, as in you know I mean only the license key shared um, no dependency exists between them uh, I mean the libraries uh, what that means is you know stream inside can run and exist without SQL Server and SQL Server can run or exist without stream inside it comes in two editions standard and premium um, as I said before you know stream inside is used to build high throughput low latency event driven applications and now you know I mean to look at you know what kind of event processing can happen or can stream inside provide if you look at the standard edition uh, the recommended is less than 5 uh, so this is recommended for less than 5000 events per second with a latency tolerance of you know more than 5 seconds what that means is if a system is producing or if your sources are producing less than 5000 events per second and if your targets or you know if your business is okay with a latency tolerance of five seconds then you can go for a standard edition. The premium edition goes much farther you know uh, it, it can cater up to more than 5,000 events per second with a latency tolerance of less than five seconds. So we are looking at you know I mean thousands of events that's happening per second and you know it, this is almost uh, if not real time it's near real time at least. Um, <clears throat> So it's in-memory processing and it's continuous and incremental as well. Stream inside processes the events in the memory, hence no serialization overheads. And I think that's how you know it's able to uh, do that kind of, uh, or it can you know go to that level of you know low latency tolerance or low latency actually. Um, events are processed continuously and incrementally, thus analyzing the events using their temporal characteristics. Uh, it uses an adapter model and an I enumerable observable model. Uh, adapter model has been um, there for a long time, um, uh, and a I enumerable observable had some limitations in the past, but uh, I think that has also been removed. We shall be seeing that in you know as in the coming slides. <coughs> Sorry, uh, it's tightly integrated into .NET or link uh, stream insight. Uh, uh, says you can write the adapters of stream insight uh, in .NET. Uh, and the queries uh, or the patterns can be written in link. Uh, it has two deployment models. One is uh, you can run <coughs> a stream inside as a hosted or embedded server. The embedded deployment model allows applications to transparently embed the stream inside server into the solutions. Uh, if there is only one app instance that is working on a set of event sources, then this method is preferable. But if you have multiple applications that need to share the same event data sources and can benefit from uh, access to you know multiple metadata objects, then you can always go for a remote server. For example, if you want to register one event source and you know uh, run uh, several patterns for that event source, then you can go for a remote model. Uh, let's <coughs> take a look at the stream inside architecture as such. Uh, the runtime components consist of a set of components to host the stream inside server. It contains the core engine DLLs for embedded hosting or a standalone service hosting. Uh, it also contains the adapter framework DLLs. Uh, there is a client only installation available to connect to a remote stream inside service. Uh, that's if you go for a remote server mechanism, then you know <coughs> there is a client specific uh, uh, you know uh, installation available which you can use and create your stream inside applications. Um, so looking at this architecture, uh, I think it's, it's uh, fairly close to what we saw uh, two slides before as CP architecture. So you have event generators on the left hand side and event consumers on the right hand side. Uh, so the event, uh, so some of the event generators here are, you know, some devices, sensors, web servers, uh, event stores. Some of them could use a pull model and some of them could use a push model. Uh, 
So, uh, points to note uh, or points to recollect are the events in this event generators have its own structure. Uh, the number of, uh, for example, you know, um, uh, they could have uh, a set of you know, fields and data types on its own and they could differ from each source uh, and they may also have a temporal characteristic. For example, sensor could be generating event um, uh, uh, for a specific point. So, that one particular event would be valid only at that instance whereas uh, uh, you know a, a database could you know um, uh, potentially uh, say or report a transaction or you know any any event that could exist for you know some amount of time uh, so that is called an interval event again we'll be seeing that in a few my, you know, few slides later <coughs> so uh, you can you can see that you know there is a set of sources here and there is a set of things here so um, you might have guessed by now, so these are a set of specific adapters built for each of these, you know, uh, generators, and uh, this is what you know uh, are going to do either the pre-processing or the post-processing. Uh, so every source will know how to connect to every uh, event generator, uh, whether it's a pull or a push, um, and then uh, it will convert the uh, source-specific data type to stream inside-specific data type and then uh, it's then passed on to the standing processes or the query logic. These query logics are actually written in link uh, and you know made to run within the stream inside engine and as the queries are watched over uh, like this uh, the matching queries are then passed to the sinks. Sinks or the output adapters connect to the uh, you know even consumers again they know how to connect uh, either using a pull or a push uh, they have the connection information, uh, which could be your, you know, a web URL or a, a, sorry, a web service URL or, you know, a message bus uh, address, target address, or you know, it could be anything, or even a database for that matter. So uh, again, uh, the things will be changing the uh, data type that is specific to stream inside and to a consumer specific format, and then either do a pull or push. <coughs> um, that's it. So let's uh, move on to Stream Insight development model. Uh, Stream Insight applications, uh, as you saw, uh, as I was telling before, you know, it can be developed using .NET. Uh, it supports Framework 4. Uh, the current version is 2.1. Uh, Stream Insight uses both adapter model and the current, uh, you know, observable enumerable model. Uh, in the adapter model, we have uh, the input adapters, and uh, so um, I think we have seen this enough. The input adapters or .NET libraries that can read events uh, from event sources and convert to you know a CP consumable format. So in this diagram, ET1 is your event source. E1 is an event that is coming out of this ET1, and it has its own type. A1 is uh, a, 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 a corresponding adapter for AT1, which reads E1 and converts it to you know a specific type. You know, note the color. They are all so all these events that is arising out of these adapters are of similar type, and the events that are occurring outside the adapter are of a different type. And as these adapters convert the, excuse me convert the uh, uh, source specific format to CP consumable format. Uh, there are a few query templates which has been defined at you know stream inside level. Uh, so uh, so these query templates are uh, nothing but your link queries and on the right hand side we have output adapters uh, so which has a similar you know uh, task. I'll come to the query templates a little later. Uh, so we have CP consumer or CP specific format, or stream inside specific format, which is you know watched or you know passed to A3, uh, which is the output adapter for A3. Uh, A3 you know is responsible for converting that to E3, uh, which is of interest to A3. Okay, so this is the event that will be uh, uh, consumed by you know the event consumer, which is A3. Uh, so coming back to the query templates, uh, these query templates are you know, uh, part of the query logic. So the query logic consists of two parts. One is the query template, and other is the query instance. So this will be your query instance. 
a query instance is nothing but uh, you know a runtime uh, you know instance of uh, a combination of your input adapter, your query template, and your output adapter. So, sorry, one such pair you know uh, combines to form one query instance that can be registered with uh, you know Stream Insight engine. <coughs> sorry. Um, as individual events arrive in the server, these events are processed by these standing queries, which may output events in response to arrival of input events. Um, I think we have seen query instances. Let's move on to the contemporary or the current model. The current model uh, uses I enumerable and I observable. I guess most of us would be familiar on the enumerable model. Uh, so the enumerable, uh, uh, you can find it almost everywhere in .NET. So it's uh, or in the collections, .NET collection. So it's used for pulling data. So you would be normally using a for each loop and iterating over is enumerable. Um, so these enumerables are for pulling data. And uh, so uh, there is another set of similar to you know, enumerable, which is iobservable interface, which is used for pushing data. Uh, so if if you guys are if, if the audience is familiar with you know reactive extensions, they will know what you know desire observable is. Anyway, uh, at this moment uh, we can just skip this and uh, at a, in a later stage um, probably on slide um, 13 or so you know I'll be or 14 maybe I'll be explaining them uh, in a little more detail. Uh, so you can uh, basically define uh, for example if you want to go to the observable model, uh, uh, then you can define your event sources as observable. Uh, you can write your queries which are observing the observables or the event sources. Then your query results can be uh, made as observables again, and your sinks uh, or you know the output adapters, not adapters actually, uh, because in the contemporary model they are called as sinks. Uh, they will be acting as observable for query results. So, uh, so your uh, sources or this uh, will be actually a source which will be you know acting as an observable. You know, reading events from this and exposing it as an observable. This query instance will keep observing this. Uh, I know, um, no, no, uh, so sorry, I'll draw here. The query instance will keep observing this as you know uh, there is a new event coming in here. It gets pushed to the CP server, which is again you know producing the query results. And these query results are again acting as observables to the things. Um, sorry, I'm drawing that everything in one diagram, but I think. When, when we move on to you know further slides, I'll explain a little more clearly. Um, so let's start uh, looking at you know what how a typical stream inside app will look like. Uh, so to create a stream inside app, as a first step, uh, you would have to analyze the business domain for uh, the following criteria. Uh, you would define the situations to be detected first. These situations could lead to an opportunity or a threat, as we saw before. Uh, a situation will be defined as patterns in the CP world uh, or query templates in streaming site world. And then you define the information to be reported. Uh, uh, this will be like, you know, what other information would be required apart from, you know, uh, as part of your reporting of the opportunity or threat or as part of your uh, output event, you know, what extra or uh, what, what should be part of the output event as such to be reported, uh, the complex event as in. Uh, if if you look at the patient example, then this could be the life threatening values from all sensors that has you know uh, that has been detected. You know that can be argumented for uh, you know uh, the CP event, which could be like you know patient is critical. Sorry. Uh, then we identify and define the event sources. Um, there could be multiple sources sharing similar or discrete data, which should be aggregating on. Uh, uh, each of them might send the event in their own format. So again, going back to the patient example, uh, there are t three different sensors, and each would be sending in their own type, and they'll have their own discrete set of data, which we should be aggregating on to determine if the patient is ill or not. Um, then you define the event target uh, or the consumers of these complex events. Uh, um, again, uh, the factors that were applicable for event sources, such as event type, connection mechanism to you know connect in pull or push the data is all applicable to the uh, targets as well. And then you use the adapter model. Um, so you analyze the temporal characteristics. 
uh, and then you you know start creating an input adapter uh, or you start creating an output adapter and then you write your query template using link uh, and then uh, 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 all these the input adapter the output adapter and the query template will be combined to form one CP query instance and then it's bound to a SQL uh, sorry stream inside server so once it is on uh, you can just start the query um, so you can start and stop the CP query at will and so uh, uh, APIs allow that uh, if you use the IF global enumerable model instead of the adapter model uh, you know you are uh, even producer on your even producer, you will implement uh, an I observable or enumerable for either push or pull, and then on the even consumers, you will implement the I observer interface or a class that consumes an I enumerable, and then bind these objects to queries. So let's take a look at um, how to write an input adapter. So an input adapter would uh, read 